Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom. <laughs> now, last time we built this wonderful Protoceratops habitat and today we're going to move into playing around with some of the modular build tools and build a little bit of a shopping precinct type location for our guests to go to after they've had a little look at our first exhibit. And then we'll start maybe plotting out where we're going to put our next dinosaurs. So let's dive into our speed build and I'll talk more about what we're kind of going for with this vision and how we're going to design it. All right, so we started off with a basic platform here that I just built in and uh, you get a little bit of an idea that we're going to have this outside part of the building that's kind of like a decking that guests are going to be able to go and sit around and kind of walk around, remembering that we don't actually need to put path on these because with them being floor pieces, the great thing about Prehistoric Kingdom is your guests are going to path onto those floor pieces without the need for a actual path put in place. Anyway, moving on, we put in our toilets and two vendors. Now, that's all we're going to have in here. The rest is going to be kind of little decorative touches, a little bit of foliage and planters and stuff, these vending machines, and then some seating areas, because we're actually going to surround this with a second habitat, which we'll talk about later. I wasn't going to do it, but because it's not taking me too long at all to finish all of this off, <laughs> we've actually put it in this week's episode as well. So we're making good progress already, having built two habitats and a small kind of facilities building. And uh, yeah, it's been really easy, mainly because I've spent a lot less time doing foliage and rock work on habitats and things so it means that things go up a little bit quicker and whilst they may not as be as detailed as they are in Planet Zoo we're still getting some fairly basic looking but quite highly detailed habitats regardless. Anyway moving back in I wanted to change the design of the floor here because I'm actually going to separate my toilets and my vendors into different areas. So this toilet here we're just going to make a little bit of a doorway here for it and then we're going to run a wall going all the way down so it's completely separated from the rest of the building. Now what we could also do is put in some little sinks and stuff along this corridor area so that that actually just looks more like the toilet cubicle and then uh, the sinks and things Things and where people can kind of leave the restroom or uh, as a separate kind of piece but that's a long way off I'm still exploring and playing around with the build pieces we have at our disposal and one of the great things is these little coat racks and these uh, already dressed um, design features that are just really cool little things that you can put on including these posters and of course we can use the scaling tool to adjust them and make them smaller and then put in some different designs that are already stock and thrown in there which is really cool two different variations on our clothing kind of features as well which is really nice and then we just need to uh, mess around in here we're going to do a plant next after we've put in some signs and then finished off some of the walls on this interior so this is the sign that matches the clothing shop that we have here as well. There is a sign for each one. And I did want to kind of play around with some of the other features like this archway, which has got a really nice um, foliage design on it. But uh, after playing around a little bit, I decided that it wasn't going to work. So we took it out and then... Uh, went back to our next tactic. So I did want to use these and I thought using them on the interior would be a good idea, but unfortunately it didn't work. So uh, we actually saved this for the exterior section of the building. Moving on, we uh, shift that wall down and then this was another attempt at getting that foliage wall to work and it didn't again. So having it inside, probably not the best idea. It's uh, definitely better for an outdoor piece rather than having it inside. Next up, I'm gonna put a little planter in here uh, we're going to duplicate that little um, clothing piece there and then move that along and then we'll get in with our mulch. Now, again, very, very similar design um, like um, routine developing here um why not why why change something that you're used to so that's why you're seeing a lot of the techniques that i use in planet zoo in here it's just they take a lot less time because using the scaling tool makes everything a lot simpler i spend a lot of my time in planet zoo hiding bits where things clip and uh, i don't need to do that now because if there's a clipping issue i can just make the piece that is causing the clip smaller and it still sits in nicely now one of the things that i'd been doing here was trying to just decrease the size of these goldenrod plants and i'd been using each axis when actually what you can do you can see there trying it again and it, it doesn't really work the textures go a little bit strange however if you actually grab the scaling axis in a different way you can 
change the size of the whole thing on every single axis, which means you can get some really nice smaller plants put in place. And uh, if you lock the size of the, the last one that you've adjusted, everything that you then put in will take on the attributes of the previous one. So if I have a small plant and then duplicate it and add in a new plant, just using the actual duplication tool, as you can see there, the Monstera plants stayed much smaller. And then when we switch to the Bromeliad plants, they stayed small too, which makes decorating this plant a lot easier. And uh, yeah, this is another time saver that I thought was really, really cool and allowed me to flesh out and finish off this plant there very quickly. And it just needed a little bit of a, a topping on it to uh, give it a little bit of a framework and uh, hide the rather odd looking top of the texture of these wood pieces. Now that happens in uh, Planet Zoo as well. Uh, when they kind of design these building pieces, the tops of them are kind of meant to be covered. So having them in here as well still didn't give me a great uh, deal of pleasure. And it was time to cover the whole thing up with a flat piece of wood. And this theme would then continue on, that light wood, we'd then add into various other areas of this building. So we've got this really nice modern look to the whole thing, very much like the conservation packs that you see in Planet Zoo. So that was the kind of feature that I was going for. Uh, I'm trying not to make things too rustic, I'd like things to be a little bit more futuristic. And again, these wonderful looking decals with these nice backdrops, they go into this area here, just behind the foliage that we've got in here and I think they look really cool these are actually a three piece so you can have the third part of this but because I was only using the top half of the actual design itself I didn't need to make any further adjustments and I certainly didn't need to add in the third part of this triptych but it's all looking really nice and things are starting to come together really quickly all in all this build including the habitat that follows took me about two hours which uh, considering that it is a fairly detailed bit and we are still kind of getting used to the the build tools and how things work in here I think that was really quick going and uh, I imagine playing something like Planet Zoo, this would have taken me uh, at least a double the amount of time. So you can really see the way that they've adapted some of the features that they've borrowed from Planet Zoo and, and made the quality of life in terms of building in this game a lot better. Like I said, there's still quite a few things that they do need to improve in here. We need staff, we need some sort of um, management roster or something because at the moment our staff uh, they don't exist so you kind of have to click on a habitat to clean it up or refill your feeders your vendors don't have anyone working in them so you would imagine that your guests just walk up to it and instantly the uh, food or merchandise that they're buying just spawns in there there's no atms you can't like click on your stat on your guests to see what enjoyment they're getting from the park and things so a lot needs to be added to the game but the core build tools, the dinosaur models, and all of that sort of stuff is very, very well developed and well detailed. Especially when you've got things like these aircon units and the other little bits and pieces are really, really well detailed. The textures look fantastic. There's a, a lot of realism in there. And I just think it looks like a really, really good looking game. So if you are just wanting to come in and um, design something, you can do that now. It's the uh, management tools and the like challenge mode features, which is what we're playing in right now so that we've got that budget and have to do research and stuff. All of those things do need massively expanded. So coming back into the build, I wanted to do a little bit of uh, work in here with bringing out these frames that we've built. Uh, I duplicated it and moved it across to the second window and then started using some of the timber that I'd constructed and adjusted the size of to frame my doorways. And it's starting to look really nice and obviously we've still got to put the roof on but I wanted to do that last so that I could fully flesh out the interior design of the build and then we can move forward and I'll talk a little bit about the habitat as well. Uh, yeah, so it's looking really good and having finished it, the guest pathing works very well. Guests come in here, they walk around. I've not yet seen anyone go to the seating area, which actually now overlooks the new habitat. And that might be because there's a lot more viewing space in other areas of the uh, zoo for this uh, animal that we're going to put in. 
But other than that, I'm really happy with how this is looking. And it was so easy to put together. Obviously, the tools, uh, you, you've got to do a little bit of getting used to to get it right. But once it's done, and once you get the hang of it, it's uh, really, really quite intuitive. And the, the build process is very, very quick. You can see here, we're now starting to put our roof on. And I played around a little bit with this because I wanted it to lap over the top, very much like uh, you do see with some of the builds that I make in Planet Zoo, where the roof doesn't actually just adhere straight on. I just think adding a little bit of an overlap on the end of a roof, like you're putting in a side eave, just makes it look a little bit more stand out. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work in this, but I managed to actually duplicate the side pieces and decrease them in, in width so that we ended up with a very tiny slim panel that runs all the way up the side of the building and uh, just finishes off the roof really nicely. We could also expand this further by putting in some guttering and things. Uh, there's a lot of features like that already done and in the game, which is really nice to see. We could also add in some air conducts and air con units and things because some of those uh, smaller minor props are there and they look really cool again. But I just wanted to keep things a little bit more basic as we're still getting used to things. So we continued building on the grid, bringing in some more pieces there just to uh, finish off our roof slopes. And I wanted the uh, section that is like a little bit longer to just end at a certain point we then made this all glass and we are ending up with a really nice end to our building with a lovely little um, non-symmetrical roof piece there that uh, really finishes it all off we put in the slim pieces of roof to finish off the framing of the whole structure and uh, dyed them black so that they had a little bit more of an obvious uh, part to play in the rest of the build. And I could do the smaller eaves black as well, but I decided to leave them the basic grey colour that we had in. And then I uh, made some mistakes here trying to flip around this angled piece when actually I should have just been using a, a basic roof piece that <laughs> so eventually when I decided that I wasn't going to be an idiot we put in the pieces that we actually needed and adjusted the size of those so they created the uh, final lip and that lip then continued all the way along until it matched up with the other part of the roof there. So that's pretty much it, we're nearly done here actually, and once we are done, we're gonna then build our new habitat, which I, I wasn't gonna put in, like I've already said, but I was quite excited and I'd, I'd done this really quickly. We've got this really nice basic building. We're gonna put in our doorways, finish off the, uh, the roof pieces here, get that wall nice and matched up and completed. And then once our doorway's on, we'll move on to our actual dinosaurs for the day, which I wasn't expecting to do, as I've already said. So we. Uh, get this uh, bit of wood put in place maybe we could uh, touch it up a little bit more with some lighting and things just to really finish it all off but I was generally pretty happy with how this all turned out we just needed to adjust those timber frames a little bit so that they uh, merged in with the wall really nicely and then obviously we need a doorway on here but in the meantime the uh, sign here needed to change in size a little bit and once that was done we could then concentrate on putting in our doorway now you may have noticed that I was going to put wood in there but actually what happens is the textures don't line up pretty uh, pretty well <laughs> that didn't make any sense the textures don't line up very well at all in the actual uh, when you use those wooden frameworks against the actual wood walls they don't seem to match very well which is why I went back to concrete and then put in some wooden supports that we're going to fill in with some glass now initially I fill in the whole space with the actual glass pieces and it looks really cool but it actually impedes our guests from getting in. So we have to have one wall completely bare. I mean, look at them, they look like doors, glass doorways, which I think is really cool. And then we put in the long panes there, have a nice trim along the bottom, and it all matches up really nice and gives the, the building a really nice entranceway which I thought looked really nice. But unfortunately, our guests can't actually access the building. 
and you'll notice this when we bring this other side into place and put it down we instantly have uh, no path available to the inside of the building which is a shame so we do have to remove one of the pieces on either side so that there's a bit more of an open entrance for our guests now i did want to play around with adding a few more windows in here but instead i decided to use these facade pieces that we had played around with earlier on in the build to create a little bit more of a, a green feel to the whole building we put some archways in covering the doors tried messing around around with some of the sizes and stuff but I couldn't get any adjustments working uh, well so we just used the flat pieces to give a nice pop of color on the side of that building. Next up I wanted to put an awning on so we grabbed the stock piece of awning and just adjusted the size. Very easy to do in this game makes the building process a lot quicker than adding it into position and there we have it. Of course the building needs power. So we're going to put in a solar panel and we're going to add this to the top. Now at the moment as there's no staff we don't actually need a path to these power uh, facilities so we can actually put our working solar panels on top of the building which is a really good touch because it means we get power and those solar panels look really cool next we just needed to put some steps in to give our guests a bit more of a free-flowing entrance to the building itself obviously on the back side there's decking so they will be going out onto a more elevated piece and everything should be okay so once we'd uh, flattened the terrain here we just put in some steps got them leveled up real nice and then it was a case of adding in some flat structures to create a little bit more of a step obviously playing around with the terrain to try and get it right but it didn't quite work so we had to uh, improvise there's a little bit of a stone step upwards and then you get those wooden steps into the building itself putting in a few benches now these benches i think they're a bit of a weird uh, configuration in their stock size so maybe uh, extending them a little bit would uh, help improve things i just don't think they look amazing as they are they could do with being a bit longer uh, but yeah never mind they went in and i was pretty happy with it and now we're gonna do a habitat as well seeing as i've got plenty of uh, space left in the video <laughs> we can uh, actually put a fence all the way around here and then we're gonna add our habitat in so some nice simple log fences going in here we're going to add some of the stock fences that come with the game itself without making too many custom ones but i'm going to make a custom framework for them and then use the um iron bar backdrops that we've got with these fence pieces here just to uh, give it a little bit more depth and i think they look really cool uh, we could have adjusted the uh, length of it but i decided to use two so we've got a little bit of a, a support in the middle of the fence and then we move these around get it all lined up once it was lined up uh, rather than extending the decking here i decided to just adjust the size of some of the fences so it's a it's not completely symmetrical but uh, we've finished off the fence basically uh, it just meant we had to move everything around get it into position and then start selecting the fences here and then moving them so they matched up with the deck that we've got built then we adjusted the size of the final fence post and we did the same on this corner piece as well just moving everything into position so that it was all lined up nice and neatly and then moving the fences slightly adjusting the size of each side piece so that it all fit uniform and i was pretty happy with it even though it's not perfect it still creates a really nice fence and guests can come out the back here have a nice little sit down while they're having a drink and uh, observe the dinosaurs that are going to be put in the pen just opposite here now we haven't done our own backstage area for this pen we've used one of the stock ones again a different one to our last episode but it allows us to get another species of dinosaur in as we start our first ever franchise mode zoo in prehistoric kingdom a few more seats going in because there's plenty of space for our guests to actually observe the dinosaurs as this habitat is going to wrap around the entirety of this building then we come in with some null barriers and then we'll use some of these stock fences here to create our actual habitat which is going to have the backstage area there and then it's going to curve around and curve right to our entrance there then a nice flat texture going all the way up looking really good a nice big habitat for our new dinosaurs we're going to put a load of trees in just to give a nice bit of background to this uh, build here there'll be a little bit of rock work done at the back as well and the dinosaurs that we're going to use is the colodonta i think i said that right i could be wrong though so the colo uh, colodonta uh, we're going to incubate five of those give them a little bit of a pond 
Uh, I still haven't quite got used to the water tools here, so it's a little bit messy, but uh, we get it worked out. Now, these guys, uh, they like to use uh, temperate biomes and um, tiger biomes or uh, tundra biomes. So we're going to need to do a nice little mix of each one. And again, having a little bit of trouble here with the landscaping tools and the general like textures, everything coming on a little bit too strong for my liking. So we do need to make a few adjustments there. But uh, once we got the hang of it, it starts started to take shape and it looks really nice. Uh, flat foliage brushes going in there just to give a nice mix and this is far too much foliage for what our new dinosaurs uh, prefer in their habitats but as you can see here as we change some of the landscaping and mess around with the um, intensity of the brushes we do get a little bit of a, a better coverage in the habitat itself. Now one of the great things about using terrain brushes in Prehistoric Kingdom is if you put snow down, it doesn't automatically melt. So we get a really nice uh, look to it all. We're just waiting for daytime to come back around here and uh, our new dinosaurs to be incubated so we can put them straight into their new enclosure. But yeah, when you put in those uh, terrain paint brushing things, they, uh, if you want snow down and you're in a biome that gets traditionally a little bit warmer, your snow won't melt. It is forever painted on as if the uh, temperature within the habitat remains the same all the time. And uh, <laughs> that's really good because it allows us to make these lovely brush strokes and uh, get everything put in place, which is uh, really nice to see. So uh, once we'd done that and played around a little bit, we had a look at what they needed. So got down a few um, of their feeders and then added in some uh, new trees and stuff. So we had to take out what we'd already put in and just make a few adjustments to it. Now it's a bit dark, so you're, you're missing out on some of the uh, main things here, but we are reducing the size of the pond because they've got too much water in here. Once that was done, hopefully that's gonna give us a little bit more to play around with in terms of foliage, but we do need to put our backstage area in. Now I've brought this right up to the barrier in the hope that at some point our guests are actually gonna be able to go in this area and have a look around. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it works or if they actually uh, can go through null barriers as you would expect if you are kind of used to playing this sort of game. The null barriers should be traversable by guests but I, I haven't actually seen anyone go in them yet. So hopefully that'll be uh, something I can work out. I may not have uh, worked out how to actually use the feature properly uh, but we'll just see how that goes. Anyway, next up, we're going to do a little bit of a rocky structure here just to play around a little bit more. All of this is about learning the tools and exploring and getting a little bit more used to things, but it's really easy to do this type of building in a prehistoric kingdom. You can see that the rocks always seem to look different. They get slight rotations on them. You can adjust the size free at will and uh, just uh, make some really nice rock structures. Now, this is the uh, mossy rock. Um, it's got a really nice Nice texture to it the ross the, the moss kind of grows exactly where you would expect it to and you then get the flat rock texture coming through and uh, really finishing it off it looks really nice and i'm really pleased with how these look put in a few trees and logs and stuff just to give us some root coverage coming out there and then finish it off with a few more rocks i then duplicated this entire swatch and moved it around after putting in a few of our uh, tundra biome trees and landscaping tools in there but again we did go a little bit overboard so i had to take some out which unfortunately reduced the uh, overall amount of vegetation we had which is why i ended up duplicating these rock pieces and just taking a few trees out to finish it all off so let's dive into the tour i hope you've enjoyed this uh second quick look at prehistoric kingdom as we continue to expand our brand new zoo uh, uh make sure you drop me a comment tell me what you liked about it and we'll uh, be back next week with some more builds in Prehistoric Kingdom. See you next time.